Hello, my name is Dr Paul Rose and in this short presentation I'd like to talk to you about environmental enrichment and how that helps us to promote good animal welfare. And I'm going to do that by using the domestic chicken as my example species. So let me introduce you to my chickens and to the enrichment that I'm going to use for this demonstration. It's very simple but very effective. I use this enrichment in the chickens indoor housing where they go over night time to keep them safe from predators and it's simply leaf litter that I collect from around the garden which we clean to make sure it's nice and safe for the birds and then we spread it as substrate in their indoor housing. So these are my chickens, they are two French Morans, Marie and Antoinette, so called because Mr Fox is determined to take off one of their heads. And this enrichment is really useful for them because it provides an outlet for a range of natural behaviours which they can do in an area of their enclosure that helps them remain calm and comfortable and interested when they can't be roaming around the rest of the garden. I find this a really nice way of providing the birds with more behavioural diversity and with added ways of ensuring that they can get exercise and be stimulated whilst they're in a restricted space. Even though their run is relatively large, I still like to make sure that the birds can behave as natural as possible when they're inside. So what I have done here is collected three large trays of leaf litter, which I have piled up under their perching. I haven't spread it around the enclosure. I've let the birds do that themselves by their natural foraging and natural digging behaviours. This adds more interest and provides more stimulation and therefore means the enrichment works for much longer. It's more helpful to the chickens if they can do more with it. For example, if I had spread out the leaf litter for them, they would have less foraging and scratching opportunities. Whereas by digging through the enrichment themselves, they create new ways of finding food and they create more interest in the enrichment by themselves. I also scatter feed corn, bits of chopped lettuce and other treats through the leaf litter. So that gives them an added incentive to dig through it. And all of these things together help the birds not only stay physically healthy, but also psychologically healthy as well. And these are some key components of good animal welfare. How do we define animal welfare? Perhaps the most universally accepted definition comes from Donald Broom's work from the 1980s, the state of the individual as it attempts to cope with its environment. This allows us to be measurable and objective in how we define welfare. State can be behavioral or physiological, attempts at coping can be observed, and the environment can be manipulated or changed to see how the states and the coping of the animal are altered. Welfare definitions have been updated. Newer work by David Meller and colleagues looks at the physical and mental or psychological components of welfare. It is important to remember that welfare is not something an animal has, it is an experience that the animal goes through that can go from good to poor. Looking at interactions between the physical aspect of what the animal interacts with, as well as its mental state, provides us with a fuller picture of welfare and how our actions influence it. Let's now consider how environmental enrichment can help our improvements to animal welfare. Enrichment, like welfare, can be hard to define, but this paper by Ruth Newbury provides an excellent starting point. 
Enrichment provides an improvement to the biological functioning of an animal. And this improvement comes from modifications to the animal's environment. We can evidence how enrichment works by looking at key measures such as fitness or reproductive success that might correlate with other measures such as improved health or physical characteristics that suggests the enrichment is beneficial to the animals that experience it. Enrichment can come in a variety of forms and it's important to remember that although several published works will put enrichment into categories, these categories are not mutually exclusive. The outputs and aims from each can overlap. The excellent work by Molly Bloomsmith allows you to see how enrichment can form five basic types, physical, social, occupational, nutritional, or sensory. But these outputs can ultimately be covered by more than one category. For enrichment to be effective, it needs to be biologically relevant. This means the enrichment must replicate a key resource or environmental interaction that the animal would experience in the wild. It must be based on species ecology and therefore it must promote important behaviours. By important, I mean highly motivated or adaptive. And these species specific behaviours enhance welfare. Let's put all of this into practice by looking at the domestic hen. We'll start off by looking at the ancestor of domestic poultry, the red jungle fowl. We'll look at some key components of their behaviour, as well as some key components of their habitat, so we can use this ecological evidence to understand whether the type of enrichment that I showed you at the start of this presentation is biologically relevant. Red jungle fowl are tropical forest birds. They live in dense woodland and heavy undergrowth, and consequently they're adapted to scrabbling around in the leaf litter looking for food. They're a prey species, so the dense cover offered by such woodlands is useful to them. They also live in social groups and have a strict social hierarchy for some of their behaviours. So when we promote natural behaviour in captivity, we should ideally consider the group effect on these behaviour patterns. Now that we have this important ecological information, we can go back to my original enrichment and see whether or not it's biologically relevant. Does it replicate a key environmental interaction? Is it based on species ecology? Does it promote important behaviours? And does it enhance the performance of species specific behaviours whose performance is key to the attainment of good welfare states? We will now go back to my two chickens, Marie and Antoinette, and see whether or not the enrichment works for them. So here they are scratching around. Here is my first example of the biological relevance of this enrichment. This enrichment provides a similar type of habitat that the wild ancestor of these domestic chickens would have experienced in its natural rain state. And there is fascinating work that shows that the older, the more ancestral chicken breeds actually behave in a more wild type way compared to newer or more fancy chicken breeds. Chickens really do like to scratch around in leaf litter. It's inbuilt into their DNA. And here is a wild jungle fowl in a forest floor covered with leaf litter. My enrichment is replicating the wild habitat the chickens come from. Next up, what types of important behaviour are being performed? Well, here we have a range of foraging actions that both birds are undertaking, and they are utilising the leaf litter in a variety of ways that they both find enjoyable because of the small clucking sounds that you might have been able to hear, as well as taking up a large proportion of their time activity budget. This is a highly motivated behaviour because the hens are putting a lot of effort and energy into it. 
exactly as the same way as a foraging routine in the wild would take up a large proportion of a free living bird's time. And again, here is my wild red jungle fowl scratching around in the leaf litter on the forest floor just the same way that my two domestic hens are doing. So I have provided the domestic chicken with the same behavioural output as we can see in the wild. And then we have this idea that chickens and jungle fowl do things together in a social group. So I have evidence that my enrichment promotes social interactions, promotes social foraging, and therefore enables the hierarchy and the social order that we see in our wild red jungle fowl flocks to be translated into my domestic flock of my two hens. And I hope you've just seen in that video that one of the chickens has found a treat and it's the dominant bird in this pair that has taken and eaten that treat compared to its friend. I hope this video has been useful to you in explaining what we mean by animal welfare, in explaining what we mean by environmental enrichment, and then applying those principles to a particular type of animal. There are many useful papers that you can find on environmental enrichment for domestic poultry, because the use of enrichment in these birds really provides a positive impact on their quality of life.